Welcome to the course Build a Full Stack Application in Minutes with No Red. In our first lecture, we will introduce what is No Red and what we're we going to do in this course. We're going to build a media monitoring application, and we will do that by dividing it in a back end and an API and a front end. We will not need any kind of hosting or anything outside our computer. We will not require any kind of coding or prior knowledge of programming languages. How is that possible? Because we're going to use visual programming and we're going to use Node-RED. The only requirement it will be to install Node.js, which is an open source platform, but we will do that on the next lecture. Let's start by defining what's media monitoring. Media monitoring is something invented long time ago, in the past century, when, for example, a company A was investing in advertising products or services in newspapers, TV, or radio. Company A will hire, at the same time, company B to monitor the media, and company B will send in a monthly or weekly basis reports to company A with exact information about when and how many times the advertisings appeared. This of course evolved in time and companies used this not only for advertising but in general to be aware of what was happening on the media. With the invention of the internet of course the online media became more important. This includes of course online newspapers, microblogs, blogs and social networks. And of course internet made possible for companies to become paperless and migrate everything to a web application so that company A could access this application anytime and have access to dashboards, reports or receive alerts immediately to react timely. But also this model kept evolving. Let's assume that there are many companies like company A that are interested on the same service. So what would company B do? Company B will create a front end for them so they will all use the same web application but with different credentials and they will access their information through a unique channel. Company B will use a backend to make the necessary adjustments and to fulfill the requirements of all these companies. So both backend and front end will be communicating through an API without interrupting the service at any moment. And this exactly is what is also known as full stack. So why is it called full stack? Because as you can see it's conformed by many layers which are in the form of a stack. So in the backend typically you will need to know programming languages like PHP, Ruby, Python or Java or C Sharp and in the front end you will use mainly JavaScript along with HTML and CSS and also databases are part of the full stack and even sometimes mobile applications for the most common operating systems. So when you hear that someone is looking for a full stack developer they are actually looking for someone that knows all of this which is crazy, right? Anyway, fortunately we're not gonna learn anything like this here because we're gonna use visual programming and we're gonna use Node-RED to connect this front end with the, with the back end using building blocks so we won't need to know programming languages like PHP, Ruby or, any, or JavaScript perhaps we will need to copy and paste some HTML and link some external CSS but no programming in this course. But apart from not coding, why visual programming is good? Well, I personally think that if we are capable of figuring out our application using diagrams and blocks, why can't we just use diagrams and blocks to deploy the application itself? So that's possible right now with this new paradigm of visual programming. Finally, if you search for Node-RED, you will find that it's intimately related with the Internet of Things. And indeed, Node-RED was created with the Internet of Things in mind. And because it's a lightweight application, it can run inside gateways or sensors. However, Node-RED is actually built over Node.js, 
which is a full programming language. So potentially everything that is available on Node.js is available on Node.red and it includes a lot of models for web development and that's why we're going to use it for web development. However, if you think about it, everything can be a thing. It's not that only sensors like weather, traffic or home automation are things, actually. Instant messages, emails, posts, news, videos, etc. they are all things as well. And more generally speaking, web requests and responses are things as well and that's what we will be working with. So it seems that we are entering an age where everything is converging into IoT. And it's a good idea, I strongly suggest you to start thinking as everything can be a thing. You will be able to combine things like news, media, robots, devices, transactions, everything in the same place and create new things out of the things that already exist there on the internet. So just think that everything that travels in the internet is a message. And the message can only be either data or a command. Alright, so enough about theory now. In our next lecture, we will start installing Node.js and inside Node, we will install Node-RED and build our first Hello World example. Alright, see you then. This is our second lecture. Here we will do a couple of things. We will install Node-RED and also create our first application, a Hello World example. So what are the installation steps? First of all we need to download and install Node.js. We can do that by logging into this URL nodejs.org. This website will automatically detect your operating system so you don't have to worry about that. I suggest you to always choose the option on the left, the LTS version so we'll click here and then we will save the file on our computer on the desktop is fine so once it is finished we can simply just go and execute it accept everything run it accept the terms in the license agreement and go ahead and install everything So now that node is installed, we need to open command line. Command line you can find it using any of these names depending on your operating system. For example in Windows I can use command or simply cmd for short. And then I will open this black window. Next we will need to install no red model. I forgot the command to install this model, but I can simply search in the internet how to install node red install. I will find this, uh, this command here will help me install. If you are on a Mac or a Linux machine, you will need to use sudo. Otherwise, you can just simply copy this, go to your command line and paste it and run it. Alright, so now that Node-RED is installed, let's review some of the basic information. To launch Node-RED, we need to open the command line and type node-red. So we type here cmd to open the command line and here we type node-red. We need to wait for it to load and when it's running we can see this last message that it says is running on this URL. We can copy here and paste it in our browser. We can just simply go and type it. It's 127.0.0.1 colon 1880. And here this is now red and it's running now. However if you don't want to type this number, we just simply type like a host. So instead of using this number, you can simply use localhost. 
it's easier for you to remember so if I try this I'll get the same page if we want to stop now red you won't stop just by closing the browser we will need to close the command line as long as this command line is open no red will be working if you want to stop no red you can simply do Control c if you're on a windows or a linux machine or command c if you're on a mac or if you forget about this you just simply click here and close it if you close that, those, that window you will see that no red will not work anymore so let's go back and open it again so now let's go to our first example what we're gonna do we're gonna create a hello world example we can do that just by simply dragging HTTP and then a template and finally an HTTP response this is all the blocks that we need for this example I always when I work with Node-RED I always like to show the grid so it's up to you if you like that too you can also check this to snap things into the grid so you can see this beautiful grid then we will just connect the dots also it's a very good practice to name your flow so here you we will call it hello world so we will start by configuring the first node we will need to create a URL for this let's call it hello what we need is to answer with some HTML return some plain text in the format of HTML if you don't know HTML you can simply type HTML basic basic page you can simply copy and paste this this is the most basic HTML document that you can see so let's change this and put hello world and then we can click deploy here so if we go to localhost hello we can see our application running as you can see it's very easy it's a very simple thing only three nodes here and you have your first web application the next thing to do would be to add a style with CSS and we will do it by linking an external CDN CDN stands for content delivery network an URL where you can always find a file we can simply type bootwatch which is a website that contains free themes for bootstrap so as you can see there are many skins here that you can use we will choose slate which is my favorite so slate looks like this so what we want is to find a CDN for bootwatch so if we type here we will find this where you can find the CDN for this template so let's copy the HTML link and back to our application what we need here is to quickly open here and add this as you can see I just copied and pasted this whether you use should you use HTTPS or HTTP it's a good question so if you want to avoid that problem you can just simply start from the double slash we deploy again and what we'll see now is that our application looks much better now it has the style that we took from bootwatch on the next lecture what we're going to do is we're going to start reading RSS feeds from online newspapers detect keywords on the fly and send automatic notifications all right see you then this is our third lecture and first approach to online media monitoring in this lecture we will create an RSS newsreader we're gonna read RSS feeds from online newspapers detect keywords on the fly 
and send automatic notifications if those keywords match. For this example, we're going to focus just in sports newspapers and we're going to track only one team of NBA basketball, which is the Golden State Warriors. We're going to use these four keywords, which are Warriors is the name of the team, Golden State is a nickname for the city of San Francisco, Stephen Curry is the main star and Steve Kerr is the head coach. But first of all, what are RSS and Atom? Both are types of web feeds. People refer to them also as site summary or syndication and they are based on XML. So we're going to use them because suppose that there are a lot of online newspapers that we want to monitor but they all present information in different format. We're going to use a standardized format which is RSS. This format also gives us direct access to these four things that are essential for all the news which are a headline, an abstract, a link to read the complete article and a timestamp. So let's go and open no red. Let's create a new flow and name it RSS Reader. Here you'll see there is one node called Feed Parser and this is what we want to use. It's a very simple node we only need to fill this with an URL and put the interval of the minutes we want to refresh it. Let's use one minute. So where do we find the URLs? You can simply search for sports RSS feeds. And here you'll find most popular online newspapers. For example, let's start with the first one, ESPN. And here you can only you can simply go top headlines. As soon as you see this XML means that this is actually the RSS channel and you can also confirm that because it starts with RSS. Just copy this and paste it here. Let's put a short name ESPN. Connect the debug here to read the output. I also recommend always to use complete message object and also when you're working with multiple workflows it's a better idea to choose only to deploy modify flows. Let's connect this and deploy it. We look into the debug window, we can see each of the news and they are parsed as an article with a title, description, link and so on. So now what we want is to look for some keywords. For that we're going to use switch. This node allows us to look for property of our object. In this case what we're looking is for the description. Article dot description we're going to look if it contains Warriors or if it contains Golden State or if it contains Curry or if it contains Care. We also need to add one option, any other, to send it to the fifth port. So as you can see now, we have a node that has five ports and what we're going to do is to send an email if the keywords match. For that there's a node called Email So let's configure it. Now that we have our credentials here, we need to see what inputs do we need to pass to this node. Click into info. We need to fill the payload with the body of the message and topic with the subject. Also we need to provide from with an address that we can identify. For that we need a change node. Recalling from here, we want to catch any of the first four outputs. So I'm going to wire the first four. If it matches any of these four, we will send an email. Otherwise, we're going to dispose that result. Also note that if this word comes with an uppercase like this, it won't match because we are only using lowercase. To fix that, we can simply switch this to regex and do that for all and also check the ignore case checkbox also if you know regex you can merge all these four in just one expression if you know how to do that but we're gonna keep it like this right now what we want now is to set the payload would be the body of our email with the description of the article so we can simply say article description and as a subject we would like to have the title there. 
finally the field from to be something like this so once we have these three rules we can simply connect this here this is my email and here we see that we have an RSS alert and see that there is something about the wire however there is something missing the link where I can read the whole story of the article unfortunately it's not possible to say okay something like this so I'm gonna delete this here we're not gonna handle the description here and we're gonna add a template here so we will open our template we're gonna use a mustache template you can simply just put here article description and then read more put the link so what is mustache mustache is a library of JavaScript that uses these curly brackets twice so with a little bit of imagination you can see a mustache here let's just save this and deploy again and look at our inbox we can see that now that we have the description the summary of of the article and also we have this read more with the link however the link here as you can see is not well rendered let's take a look at the info box from for this node and see by default mustache will escape the HTML entities so to prevent this we need to use triple braces triple braces here try again now we refresh this this seems to work if I click on it I can see the link is working so let's go and add more feeds we already did for ESPN let's go for the next one which is Fox Sports all headlines and then we can copy this find our feed parser here paste the URL let's set one minute Fox we can simply just wire here and deploy it and go to our email and see now that we have this is the one from ESPN and we also have one from Fox Sports if I click here I can see this one is from Fox and as you can see there's one problem here that these alerts will keep triggering over and over because there's no logic to keep track of the alerts that have been sent but we are gonna fix that on the next lecture so let's review what are the inadequacies of our first approach first of all alerts get triggered over and over also changes in our configuration right now require that we have to deploy the application again and therefore we interrupt the service and this is because we are following this schema where we are doing the configuration directly into Node-RED on our next lecture we're gonna build a back-end web interface so that we will manage the RSS feeds and keywords in real time we will replace this configuration here with the back end and also we will design a better logic for the notifications so they don't get triggered over and over we're going to create a front end to display the content thank you very much welcome to our fourth lecture here we're going to design our back end recall from our last lecture we had this design we're going to implement a database and we're going to use SQLite SQLite is a good option in this case because it's lightweight it's portable so the whole database only uses one file and uses a simplified syntax compared with other flavors of SQL we will need to define three tables in our first table named feed we're gonna store two columns a name or identifier and a URL of our feeds on the second table the keywords that we want to monitor we're gonna combine these two tables so that no red can send notifications but at the same time we will want to store these results in a table and create one column if it's true is that we already send a notification and if it's false is that we still need to send that notification so let's go and open no red we'll need to install a new model go to manage palette and here in install we're going to search for SQLite we click here now that our model is installed 
let's go and create a new flow and name it DB admin you're gonna search for our new node and double click to configure it we need to provide the location of our database we can simply find a place on our computer and create a folder monitor so we can copy this path paste it here and choose a name for our database monitor you can either put SQLite dot SQLite or simply DB or you can use the extension that you want it doesn't matter and we add that this name is DB so now what we need is to create three tables we're gonna do that by injecting a SQL command and in topic we can put create table we only need to provide the name of the table and the names of the columns of the table let's repeat this for the other two tables for this table we only need one column called expression and finally a table for all the matches and we will store the link title description and one column called sent also it's a good trick here to specify link to be unique and then we can just simply wire this here deploy and if we trigger this three we have just created the three columns it's a good idea to have one in case we want to erase the table and start it all over again called drop let's also put some labels here to know that these are for deletion and these are for creation and we have our database running so now that we have our three tables need to specify a backend and this will be the URL where we manage our feeds we can actually reuse our past flow of hello world so in this flow we will put all our web requests and let's go and change this instead of hello monitor feed here on our template we're gonna reuse this because we already have the boot swatch CSS and remove this paragraph remember the name of the template is slate let's go back and see so we want is to show a table so let's go here just copy the source code of a table and paste it here so if we deploy this and go localhost monitor v so if you know bootstrap you can simply put a div here class container and let's remove all the rows that we don't want let's remove this the first column will be name then URL and we leave one column for deleting the rows yeah we have only three columns next we will make a call to the database so we're going to insert this here and use a fixed statement so we're going to select everything from feed we need to see the output of our database let's fix this error here select sorry I forgot to put this here so if we see the output the payload comes in an array which is empty because we don't have information on the table so let's go and create a new endpoint this time the method will be post because we want to create a form we'll put this temporarily here and on the template we will need to add a form here so let's open some space here and create a form 
So let's take an input from here. So here you see the forms. We need a text input. And paste it here. Need to change the name here. This is for name. We don't need we don't need a placeholder and a name name and this is not a specific type. This label is for name. And do that and do one for the URL. So if we deploy again, we see that we now have a form. Now we need a button to submit the form. Let's take a look at the input here when we send the form. Test name, test URL. When we click add, we see that inside our payload we have our variables here. So what we want is to insert this information into the database. We can do that with a simple template. With this simple statement. And then send it to our database. Let's just copy this. And in this case we don't we're not using a fixed statement, we're taking it from topic. So, so we need to make sure that we're sending this on the topic. We want to read the output here and see the results. Read that from here. So So we can see on the payload that now we can we can read the database and see the results that we just ingested. So we need our template to be able to read on the table. We're going to loop into inside our payload and this is with this special character, the bound key. This is how we close it. We need to change this to more such. and then we can see this specific syntax where you can read more about it just click here on the info box and you can there's a link here where you can see how you can look inside a list like here so we're going to loop inside our list we're going to show here the name the URL and here we would like to add a link to delete go back to our template and look for a button Mm, so what about this? We can use this one, the red one. Let's copy that and paste it here. We don't want to use button, we will use link. So we can change that. And let's leave it like this for now. Delete. Now if we deploy this, yeah, we can see now the table is displaying this. The button is not working though, so let's configure this button. By a simple trick here in SQLite is that you can retrieve the raw ID. So now that you have it, it's simply you can call it from here. Now we will need to create some endpoint. Let's create a subfolder called delete and then the ID here. If we refresh this, a different URL where it's supposed to delete it but we haven't done it yet so let's go back and create it. I get method so I'm gonna copy this from here. So in no red it's possible to read the params if you use column here row and the name of your variable. We need to send an output and we see now is uh, the params that you're sending and this is here. So let's add a template similar to this for deleting. So 
so we need to know where's the path of our ID and is inside rec params and then row ID we can reuse this send the command to the same database so there will be no need for this wire here we can actually delete so we can create rows here and delete them so let's go ahead and add our original feeds we can simply go here and copy this this will be ESPN Fox Sports oh but there's a problem here if you remember we need to tell Mustache not to encode the HTML entities don't very easy if we if we put triple braces here let's delete again now we can see this is working Fox Sports so let's go ahead and add more what about CBS Sports we can also choose directly NBA CBS SI.com alright for now now what we can do is make this form look better because the size of this input is exaggerated this course is not about bootstrap but if you know how to do this you can just simply add a div class row and then div class column md6 and make two columns of six units so this will divide half and half put the table on the first container and the form on the second one and we'll see now that this looks it has now two columns and this adapts of course to different devices so if you are on a on a tablet or on a cell phone you will see this differently this is one of the beautiness of bootstrap but we forgot to put this inside of the container so there you go we already created a backend for feed and we need to do the same for keyword here what you can do is let's, let's first put a comment here we can simply just copy this and paste it here and just change everything for keyword however a quick trick you can do here is you can select everything export to your clipboard and then open your favorite text editor paste it and replace all fee for keyword copy everything again import from clipboard paste it import however there are some things we still need to change for example the number of the, the name of the columns so here we know that for keywords it's different there's only one column same for same for the insert command and the delete command well not for the delete command 
now we deploy this we can actually just try keyword and we'll see we have the same thing we can add our keywords here alright so the next step is that we have already created this backend and we have access from where we can manage our database the next step will be make no red to read the feeds and the keywords from the database and also create a small logic to make the notifications be aware of what's already there on the database and not repeat over and over let's retake our old reader and put a comment here We're going to now use a different approach because we will not use these notes anymore. We'll start adding a timestamp and first reading the keywords. We can simply copy a database from here to read the keywords. So we click here we can see our keywords are there now we will need to create expression to find any of the keywords and we will use JSON Atta we're going to define a new property just named keyword and here we will look for this J which looks like some music notation and open the editor best way to test this is just copy the object here and paste it as an example then just click here to beautify it and so what we need is to read all the expressions that we have on the object payload expression so as you can see from here with this very simple expression on JSON Atta I'm changing all this object in just of strings now there are some functions that we can use there's one called join copying this syntax it says join then the array and then the separator I'm gonna put the pipe get this result so what I'm doing is in, in regular expressions this pipe means or if you find warriors golden state Cori, care NBA any of these with just one expression and now we will read the feeds the URL of the feeds we can simply copy this from here from the feeds when I inject the signal I can see that I have a property called keyword and a payload in this case I have four URLs one ESPN, Fox Sports, CBS Sports, SI so what I want is to split this object in four different objects and I can do that with this node here called split this will try these three approaches from an array it will create four different objects of length of one now I have one two three four different objects and each object will have only one URL and all of them will have the same expression keyword use HTTP requests here but this required to have a property called URL so we will need to move what we have in payload URL to the property URL for each URL I'm getting this XML that is the RSS so next step is would be to parse the XML and now it, it will put that on the payload RSS channel first channel item and then we will see these are all the news from each of the feed with this no change to relocate following this is payload RSS then channel item and this array of 10 is what I want to move simply to payload
all my entries for each feed. Next what I need is to split these articles again so I will use again split so for every object I have only one article with the title description copy the switch from here and we can remove all of these just keep one instead of looking for a string we can use this property here keyword so for some reason it's in, inside an array look for the first member of the array the index 0 and name this match so these are all the only res the results that actually match and we can see on the description that we have some of the words we're looking for so the final step will be to insert this in the database from here we can copy any of these so in this case uh, I recommend you to add ignore in case we have repeated links this command will be ignored we need to put zero here and also we don't want most touch to encode three braces and the other two columns which are the title description we keep only two braces and finally there is a fourth column which is sent we're gonna just put zero as false and one as true so yeah we can see here this will be our command this and zero as sent we can simply copy this from here and now we can simply go and ingest all of this into our database finally we will want to send notifications we don't need this anymore but this time we don't want notifications to be every minute we can actually define just a specific time so what about launch time from Monday to Friday one day copy this from here we are reading all the objects that we stored on the database however we want only to read those that have not been sent where sent is equal zero and then split this payload times 34 different messages and here we have an object for each entry the description will be now on payload and link here however as soon as we send the email we also want to update the database and say well we already sent it simple we can copy this we can reuse this node update match set send equals to true where row ID and this is a, not an insert but an update but of course we don't want to send a burst of emails even if it's just once a day we can read it before the split we want to send it's just one email with the 27 articles the topic this time will be daily report and here on our template we would like to iterate on payload So this would be the body of our message. Now let's send the email. And we can see we have the daily report here. Of course they need a little bit of formatting but 
here are all the 27 stories. If we run this again, now we update the database that with the information that we already sent the emails. It will be sent one more time. But if we trigger this again, an empty message because there are no feeds. This can be fixed with a switch. So we look at the payload and if it's empty we'll send it to 1 otherwise send it to the port 2 empty wire this from the second if we run this again see there's no output here and we're not getting more emails so on our next lecture what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a front end to display the content and we will expose an HTML front end and also an API that uses JSON Thank you very much. See you then. Welcome to our fifth lecture where we will design our frontend. We basically have this application design and now we're going to build the frontend to display the content. So let's open no red. We can start by copying an existent endpoint and do some changes to read the table match. We don't need a form anymore, only a table. Let's change the width of the column. 12 means 100% of the width. And here we need three columns, a headline, summary, and one column for sent. Same here, so one will be a description, a title. But we want title to be a link in case we want to read the whole story. and whether it has been sent or not. Let's change the heading for latest stories. And check it out. So now here we see a table with all the items that have been matched by our keywords. In this column we can see that some have been sent already and some haven't. But let's add a line to sort these by the newest at the top and the oldest at the bottom. the newest stories at the top and the oldest at the bottom. Now let's add a navigation bar at the top. We can do that by looking at our template. So we can copy this one and paste it. Let's customize the buttons. Here we have our navigation bar at the top. Let's now implement the searching function. We do that simply by adding a method here, equals post, an action pointing to this same frontend, and a name for our variable will be search. And copy this, and create a post method. Let's see how these variables look like. So here is the variable we're looking for. We can reuse this SQL line and paste it here. Another line for selecting where title like payload dot search or the same for description. And actually we can merge these two. And using the topic. Let's not forget to use to put topic here. So now we can search something like Durant, all the entries that have the word Durant, or for example injury. But of course we would like to have the word here to see what we have just searched. So let's do that. We can do that here on the input. 
and set the value equals payload search. However, the problem is that this node will override the payload property. We can also read it from rec body search. So let's change it for rec body search. Now if I type this, I can see it stays on the text input. Let's also add a margin below the navigation bar. In Bootstrap, that is as easy as just putting margin bottom equals 4 as part of the style of the navigation bar. And there it goes. There's also a problem here. If I make the display smaller, the buttons of the menu will be collapsed on this bottom, but the bottom is not working. So that can be fixed by adding two libraries. One is jQuery. And the other one is the Bootsquatch bundle. So let's search for Bootsquatch bundle CDN. The HTML. We can remove the protocol part. Just make sure that you call first the jQuery, then the bundle, and finally the CSS of Bootstrap. Now we see it's working now. Let's go ahead and change these zeros and ones for something more intuitive. That can also be done by searching for a library called Awesome Font. And preferably at the end of the head. Now that we have that, let's search for Awesome Font check icon. We simply copy this and instead of send here we can use the same syntax for lists and now we see a checkbox or nothing however if I click on any of these buttons I can go to the different page but I don't see the navigation bar there one solution will be to copy the navigation bar from this template and paste it in these two but the problem will be that for any change we want to make we'll have to do that three times so a better solution for that is to separate the templates so I'm gonna copy this and paste it three times and in the first one I will only leave the navigation bar in a property called template navbar then another one just for the head and call it template here and finally one for the HTML from here I will simply call head, then the navbar, and finally the body. Then I wire this and as a template we will only keep our body and place it in template body. So now we can rewire these two by just keeping the bodies and we don't need this, we can send everything to here Let's check it out now. Now I can navigate through my application using a common navigation bar.
Now, what if we don't want to see this in a table but more as a showcase? We can create an additional front end called Money Showcase and add it to our navigation bar. Because we are sending this through the same channel, we will need to add a conditional here. On our conditional, we will look for the URL. Here, this variable which is inside rec. If it's equal to monitor, we'll send it to port 1. But if it's equal to monitor showcase, we send it to port 2. We can also choose to stop after the first match to make our application a bit faster. And we can copy this and create a template for our showcase. Let's go back to our template and find a card. Let's choose one of these cards. and paste it here. Iterate through payload and create one card per item. Let's move the title here as a header. We don't need this line. And here we will put the description. Now instead of showing a check we can do something fancy like just changing the color. and put this inside a column small 6 units medium 4 units and large 2 units and everything inside a row Let's also change this margin. Instead of bottom equals 3, let's do margin on all sides equals 2 and add some indentation. If we check it now, we can see now this bottom showcase. I forgot to wire this to the output. And here we can see our showcase. However, we don't want to see the navigation bar in the showcase. For that, we can simply rewire this and bypass the navigation bar. And now we don't see the navigation bar. Let's also change the light gray for the new ones and the dark gray for those already sent. I can simply do that by using the negation instead of the boolean caret means negation, so we'll do the opposite and we can also display this in a full screen if you're a big fan of the wall and state warriors you can also have this on your room and finally let's add an API we can simply copy one of these and let's name it API match and simply wire it through the same thing. In our switch we will need to add one conditional this time for monitor API match to send to the third port and our third port doesn't need any of the HTML templates so we can simply wire it directly to the output of the response. Let's try it here and that's it, we can see the same thing but in JSON format. In case we want to search using the API. So this will work exactly the same, but in order to test it we will need to use a tool like Postman. Here we need to choose the bare post, then localhost, our port, monitor, API, match. And then as a body 
search value equals injury yeah I forgot to put here API match we try it again and now we see the same five results that we will see if we simply go here and put injury we just finished creating our front end that consisted on a simple monitor with a table and also a showcase for marketing purposes we also created very quickly an API endpoint APIs are very important because they extend the capabilities of our application so this can be used immediately by other apps including mobile apps of course the case of analytics which includes business intelligence or machine learning which are very popular right now I always recommend to use no red on hackathons because while you are working on extracting and transforming information another team can start working with the data of your application another very common scenario is to find another API available on the internet and create an interesting mashup on our next lecture we will learn how to create a web feed because so far our application can only connect to sources that have an RSS channel but what if there is one source that doesn't have that channel use Node-RED to create that RSS channel and immediately that will be compatible with our application thank you very much welcome to our sixth lecture called RSS creation we face the problem that our application can only read RSS feeds but in this lecture we learn how to create web feed for sources that don't have an RSS channel and we will do that using Node-RED as well one source that I like a lot about basketball is called Pro Basketball Talk I like this website but it doesn't have RSS feeds so what we're gonna do is create a new flow and name it RSS NBC Sports for short so we'll start by calling a, an HTTP request and pasting this URL let's see what we get here is as payload we can see the HTML code of that website but it's easier if we just type control U on our web browser what we want will be to find where are the news and how they are structured in this case I can search for one of these words and see if I can find it Nick North says timeout so here we are what we would like to find is what is the smallest unit of HTML code that contains an article so for me it seems like this is one article and this is the other so what we need is a special node called HTML here we need to provide our selector so this node supports either CSS or jQuery selectors which means that if I identify the class I can simply type div dot the name of the class choose to split this in multiple messages and what I get is one object per message and in the payload I will have that HTML that contains one article the next step will be to extract the elements let's add some comments and rename this as div so that we know what we're doing so let's start in the title the title is inside a div whose class is a story title and inside of it there is one a link I could simply put div then the class space a in this case we don't want the HTML content but only the text of the content and again send multiple messages but we don't like to override the payload because we still need to extract more information from it so I will put this on a property item title 
and name this title. If I run it again, I'll get exact the same number of objects, but now here at the bottom I will have an item property with a title. We can copy this and replicate that for the link. The link is located on the same place as the title, but it's not inside the body of the HTML tag. It's inside actually a property of the tag. So in this case I can leave this same, but instead of taking the text, I will look for the attributes in this case. Here I have now, oh I forgot to put this in a different property, otherwise I'll be overwriting it. I have a title and a link here. Next we need to extract the description. In a property called item description. So we can see the description is inside a class called story summary. We call it like this and run it again. Here we have the three of them. Also there's one important element on all RSS feeds, the date of the article. It's supposed to be here, story timestamp, however for some reason it's empty. Here in the URL, the date is part of the URL so we can actually extract it from there. Because we already have the link, we're going to extract it from there. I'm going to call this date the property item date JSON ATA again to create that from an expression. Remember always copy the whole object, paste it here, beautify it simply. In this case what I want is item.link.ref. Now what I want is not the link but just these three numbers. Here we look at our reference of functions and there is one called replace which means that I can type replace the string then the expression and then the replacement d which means digit then slash parenthesis two other digits then another two digits we close parenthesis slash another two digits and we fill with a wildcard at the end and at the beginning now to extract these three parentheses we can just refer to them one hyphen two hyphen three and we have just extracted the date check it one more time here on our item we have a title we have the link here the date and the description next step will be to put everything together again This node join can be set into automatic mode if all our messages are configured with the property parts. To explain that, let's check out this diagram. In our red, there are many nodes that can perform split. So from one single object, a node can create multiple objects that are also JSON objects. However, these functions add some metadata to each object in the property called parts, which includes the index the total count of objects and a signature. If these were only four objects, no array will put something like this. This is especially useful if we want to merge all the objects back again, because they are not sent in parallel, they are actually sent one after the other. And some objects can get delayed for different reasons. So the node join will look into these parts to put everything together again. However, we want join to use the metadata that was generated by this node here. What we need then is to place that property temporarily unavailable by simply doing this. We can say move parts to underscore parts and do the opposite just before the join. And bypass all the metadata that was created by these nodes. However, we cannot use automatic because our data is not located in payload, it is actually on item. We need to create an array. 
Now we have a single object with a property item that has an array of 50 objects and each object is an article. Next we will need to create an RSS response. We can do that by searching for the RSS node. If we don't have it installed we can simply go here on manage palette, search for RSS, let's install it. Now that we have it, let's put some comments. And let's configure this. Unfortunately, this node doesn't have any description on how to configure it. In this case, we will look at the website, back to Manage Palette, under Install, RSS, and we click here to go to the official website of the model. It says it's using the RSS model. So let's click here, and this is what we need. So let's configure this. We need to provide a title. In this case, the title will be Pro Basketball Talk. Because there's no actual, we'll provide the one that we are creating. So that will be located on local host RSS MBC Sports. Next, we need to provide a site URL, which will be this. And the rest is optional. Now for each item we need to provide a title which is it's it needs to be inside a payload so let's put this on hold just for a second we first need to put our items into payload that can be done just by saying move item to payload all our articles are inside payload and then when we configure this now we can say title it's actually in title uh, description is inside description URL is inside link but inside link href git can be the same as URL in this case the rest is optional but we also need to provide date so date is in date now we can see as a payload we have an XML which is an RSS next step will be to transform this in a web service in RSS NBC sports and add an HTTP response and check it out from our browser we can see the response but it's not being displayed as an RSS and that's because we need to add a header here so we'll search for RSS header and it seems like this is the one it should be let's call this header and we need to set headers content type equals to RSS XML so if we try again now we see the XML so let's go back to our application and now we can add a new feed we will be copied from here NBC sports and we have that here so that was the end of the course but before saying goodbye please don't forget to post all your questions on the Q&A section and also leave any feedback that you have things that you liked or you didn't like and also for the next course if you have any special request or idea feel free to let me know there are plenty of different applications that we can do with Node-RED for example how to use no red in cloud servers if you like to explore more about the internet of things
if you are more into analytics or business intelligence, how can you can create dashboards and reports from here or anything. Thank you very much.